thank you everyone for joining us. We're talking about retention today. So keeping the best on board, retaining real estate agents. It's a really great topic, especially around this time of year when it's a really good time to connect with the agents that are with your brokerage and, and make those connections really strong. So I am Jenna. I work in product here at BrokerKit and I'm joined by Jim Turner, our CEO and co-founder. So here at BrokerKit, we help residential real estate brokers ramp their growth by improving their agent recruiting and retention. And we're here to talk about the challenge. So it's a really competitive market right now. And so in this competitive market, losing top performing agents to competitors threatens your brokerage's growth, profitability, and reputation. So we're here to chat about that challenge and take a look at some hot principles we can, we can master to make sure we're retaining those agents. So you'll see a poll on your screen. Have you struggled to retain top talent on your team? So I'll give you a few seconds to answer that. So it's uh, fluctuating back and forth, but I would say the majority are saying yes, that they are struggling to retain the top talent. Um, and, you know, we have a healthy amount. Um, so it's looks like it's kind of settling around, um, you know, 50, 60% saying yes. So I would say, you know, not everyone, but the majority is saying yes to that, right? And it could be that, well, and I, Jenna, like maybe if we hadn't put the word top in there, mm -hmm. maybe it would be... A little different story right because maybe you know there are some of the agents you know in your brokerage that are not producing that you're losing and there's high attrition there yeah. but maybe you know the top talent is the producers and therefore you're not losing them so attrition you know we probably should have removed the word top just to see if the results would be different okay with that uh let's move on thanks for um for uh, participating in the poll the promise here is to empower your brokerage uh, not only to retain top agents, but also to thrive in a fiercely competitive real estate market. So we have some top principles coming that really speak to how you can connect with agents on your team, whether they're top producing or brand new agents that have just joined your brokerage, and how you can make sure you're, you're retaining those agents. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of time to add to your team. Um, and so if we go to the next slide... We see recruiting is the chocolate, right? Recruiting is the sweet part of this process. It is, it's exciting. You feel immediately kind of gratified when you add to your team. It's the good, it's the fun part, right? But retention is the broccoli. So this is, you've got someone on your team, you've, you've invested that time, and now you want to keep your team healthy and strong. So you need the broccoli. You have to keep those agents happy with your team and happy in your brokerage. And so that is, that's the key here. Retention is the broccoli. So we're going to jump into five hot principles. And so the first one is that a supportive culture creates loyalty. So this is really taking a look at, at the culture that you've created with your brokerage. So how do you define your core values? This is such a key to making sure people feel valued and, and understand the mission of your brokerage. So defining core values is, is a key and guiding principle when you're, when you're bringing in new agents or when you're retaining your existing agents. Um, and so some of the ways you can do that is to promote leadership and accountability, and that's developing those leaders within your brokerage. So, you know, every level up leadership and, and having leaders that are, are picking people up and taking them, you know, to the next level with them. And they can do this with accountability. So teaching your leaders how to hold people accountable and how to be accountable themselves. So the next one you see on your screen is to embrace inclusivity. So this is a huge one, right? Diversity is so important in, in everything because it, it strengthens your team. It brings new perspectives and it makes, makes your team a little bit stronger and it creates a very inclusive and, and supportive culture. So the next one we have is personalized development. This one is really important. So everyone is going to come in and, and have a set of expectations, right? And so learning how to personalize and, and really meet people's needs even though they may be diverse and different, is so important to keeping a supportive culture. So this could be anything from, you know, the way that they prefer to communicate to, um, you know, the events they like to attend. So really personalizing and and meeting your, your agents and their needs is huge. And the next one is work-life balance. This is a huge one in real estate. You know, agents, especially when they're new to the business, can go one of two ways. You know, they might think this is a really easy business, which 
you know, they, they tend to have a heavy life balance and, and not work. And so making sure that you're helping them strike that balance and it can go the other direction too. real estate can be 24 seven. And so making sure that they're making time for their interests, their family, their, their life is so important. And it goes a long way to feeling like they're in the right spot. So the other thing is continuous improvement, ask for feedback, um, you know, check in with the agents and see what they think of, of the culture and how they're feeling, how they're fitting. Um, Jim, do you have anything to add on this one? No, no, I will just jump in. So here at Broker Kit, we, we have, uh, you know, we built a CRM for the broker versus the agent to help a broker kind of, you know, whether it be a managing broker in a big brokerage or a broker owner, kind of scale up the brokerage by streamlining, streamlining and automating your recruiting, onboarding and retention, right? So when we talk retention, these are the things you should be doing. Um, now you can do all of these, you should be doing all of these regardless of what technology you're using, right? But as your business scales, um, you know, it, it, it's it's uh, an area, some of these things are things that you can kind of like streamline and automate um, some of these things to help with your retention. Um, and so wanted to give you some examples. So what we've tried to do, um, and again, some of the people on this webinar might be customers, some of this is things you know, um, but want to give you some specific examples how to use brokerage, uh, excuse me, broker kit could be, you could potentially be a, a prospect as well, because we have non uh, customers on here. But when you go into brokerage, uh, excuse me, broker kit, I want to tie back to specific campaigns that we've built. So in broker kit, we allow you to have campaigns, which can automate, which is basically an automated sequence of email text, and then generating tasks. And we have a broker uh, campaign library. So in here, you'll see we've got uh, 50 campaigns that we've kind of pre-built for you that are in the broker kit library. You'll see four more by the end of the week, okay? And you can see them by category. Some of them are gonna be recruiting, like I wanna, you know, focus on cooperating agents, but some of them are gonna be focused on retention, new agents and current agents, okay? So if you go in, you'll see some of these. And we're gonna go through and just talk about some of these how these kind of tie back to what you should be doing essentially from a best practices perspective. So Jen is going to talk about what you should be doing. Then I'm going to kind of tie it back to, okay, here's some tools that, you know, if you're a broker kit user that you can leverage to help you do some of these things in a more streamlined automated way. Okay. Note that we also have a, um, a donated library where we've got, you know, customer donated campaigns, another 84 in there. So, you know, 120 plus out there, um, for you to check out. So I'm going to, I'm going to go through some specific ones. So let's just going back to, and I'm not going to go through all of them because there's a lot of them, but I'm going to just give you an example of kind of for each of these five hot principles, maybe one that is, um, some messaging and this is messaging. You know, if you're, if you're writing an email in Google or Microsoft manually, certainly you can do it. But if you want a little automation, we can help you with that. Okay. If you're a customer and you have any questions on this, reach out to support at getbrokerkit.com later. If you're a prospect and you're interested in hearing more, you can just go to our website and sign up for a demo. Okay, so with that, let's just talk about a specific one around uh, the culture side. So with that, I'm gonna pull up a specific campaign in our library, which is a uh, quarterly agent check-in campaign. So if you look at this, um, you know, so a big part of this is that culture is just keeping in touch with people, right? And starting those conversations um, and just um, making sure, especially, you know, if you're managing maybe five agents, not that big of a deal. When you're managing 100 or 200 agents, it starts to be really hard to do this at scale, essentially, right? Or even 25, 50, right? Th these become, you know, big issues at that point. So like with this one, for instance, um, you can trigger this and this would be like a chat, excuse me, a text to them, just checking in, right? Um, you'll notice it's gonna, it's automated. You can trigger it on all of your existing agents in broker kit. There's ways to do this in an automated way and just check in, okay? Short conversational messages. Now, informational type messages like HTML emails are great to go out and invite them to events, you know, uh, webinars, things like that. But just short conversational messages to get a conversation started with them on a regular basis are a great way to start. Um, then we're going to give you a, a task to check in um, and, you know, kind of follow up with them um, based on what they said. And then another follow up 
um, depending on you know whether they schedule an appointment or not to follow up and then check in, right? And just, hey, let's just grab a coffee. So just, you know, no, no fancy, these are all real simple messages, but they're meant to look like you personally reached out to them to show that you cared, you wanted to see how they're doing. And, and it's really a launch pad to start a conversation. So Jenna, anything else to add on this? No, this is just feeds directly into that continuous improvement. You know, when you're opening that dialogue and you're having that two-way conversation, you're able to refine and, and build. Okay. And just think all your agents trigger this quarterly, right? Um, if you got five agents, maybe it's, a you know, you know, overkill. If it's, if you have 25, 20, 50, a hundred, right. Starts to really help, you know, and keep in touch with everyone. All right. So strategic onboarding cultivates agent investment. So this is huge. Um, you know, you want your, your agents to kind of buy into your brokerage exactly when they join, you want them to feel like they are have a piece of your brokerage. They're important, they're valued. So that starts right away with strategic onboarding. Um, so the first thing is to design your onboarding program. Um, I think we've all probably experienced, you know, joining a, a company or a team that did not have their onboarding together and it just felt messy. Um, and so making sure that they join and they feel like they have a clear path to follow that will help them ramp up and be successful. So design your onboarding program, not only with what's best for your brokerage, but what's best for the agent that's joining. Um, and then organize that onboarding process. So you need to make sure you're able to see exactly where everyone is. Um, you know, as Jim was speaking, you might have five agents, but maybe you're looking to grow by 10 and you need to know where each of those 10 agents as you add them are in the onboarding process. So you need to make sure you're able to track that. And then manage your onboarding tasks. This can be across your, your brokerage. Um, you know, there might be different tasks for different uh, different positions in your brokerage as people are onboarded. Maybe they need to fill out paperwork or they need to get updated on their tech and get logins. Whatever it is, everyone needs to know what their role is in onboarding before someone is onboarding. So managing those tasks is key. Making sure that they're going out to the right people at the right time so that the onboarding process is really seamless for the new agent who's joining. And then the next is customizing the development plan. So, you know, you might have new agents joining and you might have really seasoned agents joining, you know, de de depending on the agent persona that you're, you're looking to target and have join your brokerage. So you need to design your onboarding with that in mind. If you have a brand new agent joining, they're going to need probably a lot more training and coaching right at the beginning as they're joining and ramping up because they're new um, and they might never even have done a transaction. So keep in mind the persona that you're targeting and build your onboarding to mirror that and give them the tools to be successful. When you're onboarding a really seasoned agent, you might have a completely different experience. Um, they might need to learn your systems and, and focus more on your culture and and how they can fit into that. But they probably won't need as much coaching in managing clients and things of that nature. So the next thing um, that we have on this is to um, give access to resources and then track. So make sure that they have access to everything they need to be successful. Um, this is a huge one, especially as, as people get going. So if you have a lot of tech or if you have a lot of logins that they're going to need, make sure you have those and they're ready to go for them. Um, there's nothing more frustrating than, than needing to access something and, and you can't get in as a new, new person with a, with a company. And so making sure that you're giving access and the education to use the tools and then tracking certifications, licensing, training. Um, these are really important to keep track of, uh, especially for the agents. Some of them aren't tracking them themselves. And so you can design and develop systems to make sure you're sending out reminders and you can gather all that information in the onboarding process. Okay. So, you know, again, these are the things you should be doing. And now I'm going to kind of show you some examples on how you can automate and streamline some of these things with our tech platform here at BrokerKit. So first of all, um, just some concepts. So the way broker gets built, again, it's it's built for the agent, excuse me, the broker versus the agent. It's not a system to help agents sell homes. It's a help system for brokers to grow their business by streamlining their and improving their agent recruiting, onboarding and retention. So there is a, recruit, a recruiting module when you're, when you are, um, when you are recruiting someone and you move them to signed, they're gonna go ahead and flip over to the retention side and drop in your onboarding queue. 
And this is a, this is really think of this as like the queue where someone is somebody, you know, whether it be for the brokerage or the region or the office or the team, right? Because there could be teams using this. Um, somebody kind of owns that onboarding queue and they're going through and managing, you know, all those steps to onboard an agent. So that first 90 days, um, so I have a podcast, I've, I ask brokers around how they're growing their business. One of the questions I ask is, how do you do the onboarding? How do you know when an agent is, you know, is going to be a great fit? And it's really that first 90 days, really. I mean, especially with new agents, like it's super critical that you really have it dialed in on that first 90 days. So when they drop in the onboarding queue and after you've onboarded them, you can change their status to active. They're going to be removed from the onboarding queue and then be dropped into you know, essentially your retention bucket for managing retention efforts on an ongoing basis, like getting retention reminders and whatnot. Now, this can be um, done manually where, you know, you, all the things that Jen is talking about, you can go in and create tasks to do all these things manually, or you can create a campaign and trigger it. And, 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 and it can be triggered here manually, or you can go into our campaign triggers and build a campaign trigger that every time somebody moves from recruiting to retention, it triggers an onboarding campaign, okay? So now I'm gonna show you an example of an onboarding campaign. Now this is one where it's gonna be, um, can be, uh, you know, it, it's obviously gotta be customized heavily for your business, um, but let's just say an example would be, you know, and, it, and obviously, if they're a new agent versus an experienced agent, this would be different. And I would probably fork it and have two different versions. Okay. But if you look at it, hey, just, you know, once they, um, once they jump, once they sign, right, um, and the process starts, first thing is just a welcome email, right? And that's probably from the broker owner or from the managing broker if they're joining an office in a larger brokerage, then a text checking in. Hey, here's my line. Any questions so far? A task to do to call them. Here's a script to get you started. Of course, once you copy this, we recommend you kind of dial in all of this messaging to your business. As with all of our um, campaigns, you can copy them and edit them. And we recommend that you do edit them and customize it for your business. Then follow up with, you know, another email on tools. You know, hey, you know, did you see this email that we sent? Checking back, right? Connecting with them on LinkedIn, right? So that, and it works really well, especially if you're pushing out content on your LinkedIn or um, personal or company profile to get them to follow it. Could be Facebook also, right? But like, it's it's essentially a drip series where it's really focused on that first 90 days of like really making it a, a great experience and and think of like any questions they have any blockers to helping them succeed so the way you need to think about it is right like you give it the same thing so think of um this is a talent funnel okay we've built our system around the talent funnel all brokerages which really all businesses have two primary funnels the sales funnel the talent funnel you probably have an agent crm right, where you're managing all your sales think of this as your talent funnel just like any funnel, there's really kind of three numbers that matter. How many leads, how many closings, and then how many successful customers do I have? Okay. And the reason that third number is so important is because when you have a buyer or seller and you help them succeed, they're going to be a repeat buyer, right? When they, you know, five or seven years later, when they want to sell or buy a home, they're going to come to you, but also they're going to give, tell all their friends, which is going to generate word of mouth. The same thing needs to happen on the talent funnel, right? And KPI one is how many recruiting leads do I have? KPI two is how many hires do I have? KPI three is how many successful agents do I have? Okay. And that is at day 90 that you measure that. And this is all about how do I get them to that kind of like that point where they are crushing it on day 90. The, this is going to be unique to your brokerage, how you train them, what your value is, what, what they're, whether a new or experienced agent, but Think of, that's how you need to think about this. I'm designing a workflow around how to get them to that point where they are successful in the first 90 days, okay, and, and automating it. A couple other concepts um, about this. Um, it also can be just a pure task campaign. We made an update to um, our campaigns earlier this year, BrokerKit. You'll see a little 2.0 on the newer version. We updated the campaign engine. So when you go in, 
if you turn it by default, anything new will be on our newer engine campaigns 2.0. If you unselect it you'll and you create a campaign, you'll see it'll be on our older version with less controls around scheduling, if you look at it right here. Now, if I turn that on, you'll see the buttons change. Now, the reason this is important is one of the, there were a lot of reasons we changed this, but one of the reasons is so that you could trigger a task campaign. So if you go in and let's say, create like this and you change it to any and any right here. So that's saying, that step is being triggered at any time, any day. Now you can set it to go on specific days of the week, Monday through Friday, or specific times. If you set it any to any, what that means is once that campaign is triggered, it immediately will execute with no delays, okay? So what that means is you can go in and create a sequence of tasks like this, one after the other with all of the steps in your onboarding process right here, okay? And when you trigger it, it's going to automatically create all those. So if you have 30 tasks in your onboarding, you trigger this, boom, it's going to generate all those 30 tasks. And what it's going to do is it's assigning them out to your staff members right here so that they're going to basically, when they come in, right? So, okay, whoever owns this onboarding queue, right? This They can manually set tasks and they would show right here. They're also going to get a daily email of their tasks to do. But if you trigger that task campaign, those 20, 30 tasks that need to be done every time, boom, you trigger it, all those tasks get assigned out to every team member for them to do it. So again, if you have three agents, not a big deal to onboard maybe one every three months. But if you're onboarding multiple agents per month, right, with how many tasks that need to be generated across all these different team members, um, it's a scaling problem. And then that's what that's designed to, to do is help you with automating that, that whole kind of process. The other thing is back to the campaigns, it doesn't necessarily have to be all tasks, right? It can be, you know, a, a hybrid of the two things I just showed you. It can be send them an email, send them a text, you know, here's here's how you get your MLS credentials, you know, welcome email with a video. We do have a video library and a video recorder in the system. Video emails work really great. Can be the welcome email can have a video, also can be a video tutorial series that's going to them on some key concepts that you're dripping out to them or some hybrid, right? You could have the the one onboarding campaign that's all the, the messaging and then the other one, which is the task campaign for onboarding. But anyway, um, if, if any of the, if you're a broker kit customer, and again, you have questions on how to do any of this stuff, um, you can email us at, here's, here's how you can get us, right? So you can always email us at support at getburgerkit.com, obviously call in or if you want to just jump on um, a session and talk to someone live about this, jump in our training calendar right here. And you can basically go to our office hours, which is every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Somebody can help you do these things live and set it up. If you're if, if you're um, not a broker kit cu customer and you want to hear more about it, just go to our website, sign up for a demo. All right. So coaching nurtures long-term success. Um, and this has several points to it and you'll see they're circular that is because this is ongoing coaching never ends with your with your agents this is so important for the whole lifetime that they're with your brokerage so the first thing on there um is you know skill enhancement um you know invest in in platforms and training and any opportunities that will help your agents enhance their skills give them opportunities for growth that way um, and and provide that that ability for them to to grow and increase their customers and see their success grow. And then mentorship. So this is a really good one, especially with onboarding new agents, um, pairing an agent with a new agent to your brokerage with an agent that's been there a while and having them have a mentor, someone that they can go to with questions and can get help and support when they need it is huge, especially in that 90 day launch period. Um, and then on the flip side of that, when they've been with your team or, or your, your brokerage for a long time, have them become a mentor. Um, and that's part of that, that leadership and giving people um, that ability to grow. So have them become a mentor to new agents that are joining your team. The next you'll see is productivity and predictive analysis. So this is huge. You need to be looking for 
risk factors in your age uh, in your agents. And you can see um, Jim will kind of jump into a way you can see this in in BrokerKit. Um, but watching their productivity, seeing if there's any significant changes, um, you know, identifying those red flags that they may be looking to switch, and then talking to them and finding out what you can do to support them. That's huge. It's just open communication. The next is technology training and support. You might have the best tech stack ever, and that's great. But if your agents don't know how to use it, they're not going to be happy. So tech is so important, not just in having it, but making sure people are successfully using it. Um, that could be having workshops. That could be you know, having a training day, anything like that, where you can teach your agents how to use technology and how it helps them. So the last thing anyone wants is more technology and not being able to see the value. So you need to present the value to them as well. Using this does this for you. Um, so making sure that they're understanding the technology, they're supported in the technology and they see the value. Um, and then the next is goal setting and accountability. Again, this goes through the entire lifetime with your brokerage. Uh, this is so important, especially with, with new agents um, and understanding how to set attainable goals that are still something they have to work toward. Um, and then helping them stay accountable to those goals. It's very easy to fall off track. It's really easy in the beginning of the year to say, I'm going to make 12 transactions this year and not prospect for the first three months and then find yourself behind. So making sure you're helping them set goals, understand how to take the steps to achieve those goals and holding them accountable for their actions towards those goals. And then the next is retention reminders. So you want to make sure you're touching base. Um, and in BrokerKit, you can actually do this with a, a retention reminder. But, you know, every 30 days, try and, and touch base with your agents. Maybe it's reminding them of, of an event coming up and seeing them at the event, or they have a license, you know, they need to renew their license or, um, you know, anything that you can do to keep in, in good communication with your agents. So those are all a couple of, of really key pieces to coaching and nurturing that success. And then, um, Jim, I can have you show the retention reminders in BrokerKit if you would. Yes. So these, and if you're a broker kit customer, um, you'll get these retention reminders, letting you know that these people on your team, they have not, they haven't had a touch in the last 30 days. Uh, and so this is a great way to make sure you're keeping in touch with people, even if it's, you know, happy fall, we're looking forward to Thanksgiving break. What are you going to do? You know, that's what we have coming up right now, keeping contact and having those retention reminders. And Jim, I'll, I'll kind of let you take it from here. Yeah, a couple other things on this. So first of all, for the broker kit customers, this is um, one of the questions we get is, um, hey, what if I send a bulk or a campaign email or blast email or text? Is that going to count? And the answer is no. It, it's intentionally a one-on-one -on -one touch, right? It's great to invite them to events, but the point is it's that one-on-one -on -one contact. Um, and it can be, you know, it's the one-on-one -on -one contact that generates the conversations and keeping in touch with people on a human personal level that is what helps them succeed and retain them, right? And 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 it's not you don't just retain them um, because you know just like hey they're a great agent. It's by keeping in touch, showing the value as a brokerage, having a relationship with them, but also helping them su succeed, right? Especially new agents um, by helping them succeed, they're going to produce and stick around. Especially in tougher times like now, I feel like we ran the poll and asked a separate one of. What about new agents? I think the answer would have been totally different, right? You know, or the maybe the part-time agents or the people that are non-producing agents. Probably a very different answer in that poll uh, if it was worded that way. But a couple other tips, right? So number one, you can also, we have a filter where you can filter by um, production values. This is configurable. You can change these names, you know, from mega super mid. You can set, you know, what a mega agent is. But what this does is, especially in a big, you know, a bigger office, maybe the managing broker takes all the mega and super agents, but the admin takes the new agents, right? Or, you know, if you have a productivity coach, maybe they take certain other ones, right? Who it, you can divide up by production here and say like, yeah, I just want to, you know, focus on the megas. That's what I own. Or the other one is you can set owners, right? So clearly, um, all agents have somebody who owns retention for them, right? Um, and especially as it scales, the key is, right, somebody kind of owns th that connection. So with that, if you're setting owners, then you can go in and say, instead of showing all team members, just show mine, right? And then suddenly it's like, instead of 
you know, a hundred agents that somebody needs to be in touch with, we're dividing up, right? And then you're kind of focused on yours. So I think a big part of it, especially in a market like this is production, right? Helping them, retaining them. Part of it is culture and your relationship, right? And showing the values of brokerage relative to other competitors. Um, but a big part of it is helping them produce, right? Because we all know, you know, real estate agent is a commission only 1099 role, right? you know, kind of depends on their personal situation, but if they're the sole breadwinner in the family and they're not producing, they're going to have to make some hard decisions, right? So if you want to retain them, a big part of it is um, help them sell, okay? And coach them around that. And that's training, coaching resources around that. So we've got some technology resources to kind of help you there. So back to broker kit, big part of that is knowing what they produce, okay? So um, in uh, in our data tab, we help you import data from an MLS um, MLS data production data. Okay, so I'm going to start with now. If you have Broker Metrics or Market View Broker, we have file importers that you can check out where you can kind of import the data, export it. You know, do save searches on in those tools, save them, export it, import it, um, and then just know we do a bulk. Um, it was basically, you can re-import them later and do a bulk update. We match on email and agent ID slash MLS, so it won't create duplicates. What it'll do is it'll just update their uh, their uh, production information through the last 12 months. Um, and then the other one is Realytics. So with the Realytics integration, uh, it is an add-on subscription. Um, if you're a broker kit customer and you haven't checked it out, realytics.com, this is their website. Um, and they just came out, by the way, with an API only pricing. If you're under 500 agents, it's pretty attractive. Um, you might want to kind of check it out. If you have any questions, you can go to them or uh, email our support. Um, if you have over, no, no, sorry, it's 600 agents. If you have over 600, you'd be an enterprise customer. So you can reach out to them about that. Um, but the API only pricing, it's pretty, pretty attractive. Now the folks in Canada, these two sources or excuse me, broker metrics, market view broker wouldn't be available in Canada. Um, and Realytics is not, unfortunately, either. Um, but you, there are some data sources like um, uh, IMS and RE Data, a couple up there in Canada that, that you can do the same thing and you would import them with the leads importer, okay? or excuse me, team members importer. This imports into recruiting, this imports into retention. So you can basically download the template, put that data in here and, and do the same thing. Now with Realytics, if you're using that, you can just, get the API key from them, go in and set up over here, uh, import queries. Now, import queries can be recruiting. Like this one would be, okay, I'm gonna import all the agents who sold between six and 12 units in the zip code from MRED, which is Chicago, and those will drop into the recruiting side, okay? But you can also add retention queries. So if you look at this one, this is a retention query from MRED where I'm just pulling in all the agents with this office ID. This is my office ID. And if you have more than one, you can add them and it's just gonna import essentially all your agents. Now, when it's doing that, it's importing their production and some of Realytics's predictive analytics stats, okay? So let's just go back and talk about some specifics. So, you know, if you go into one of your, your agents, what it's gonna do is it's gonna Im import and it, this data. Now, from all of the sources I mentioned, this data would update, assuming it's in the spreadsheet you're importing. But then Realix adds this panel too, if that one's available in your market and you have that as an add-on subscription, some really cool stuff for coaching. So number one, when you're meeting with them around coaching, it gives you data, right? Like back to this slide, it, you can give them specific pointers, right? Because you've got data to work on. Now, what Realix is doing that's pretty cool is they're going to give you the raw production numbers. So you know, are they up? Are they down? What do they sell? How many units? What's the production value, right? To make that part of your coaching on and goal setting on where they should be, right? And unblocking them to get there. But Realix is adding some pretty cool um, predictive analytics too. Some examples would be their rookie rating. Are they a new agent? Okay. Um, and that's going to say, say how productive they are for agents that are um, within their first three years. Um, what is their switch risk? So this means if it's red, it means they're 10x likely to leave the brokerage within the next um, 90 days. Now on the recruiting side, that's great because you know those are people you should probably reach out to. On your agents, it's important too because it's like, I, you know, show them some love. Make sure they're not going to turn on you. I wouldn't tell them this, right? But I would just shower with them some extra love. Also, you know, what is their listing effectiveness? 
how good are they are at actually closing the listings they get. What is the impact of that on a dollar basis relative to other agents on average? Batting average um, and and uh, listing count, okay? So these are all things that give them the data, right? And back to that switch risk red, right? Um, you can always go in here and just be like, okay, I'm gonna look for my reds and I'm gonna focus on these people in particular to, to shower them the love, right? So it's it's creating some kind of automation around some of these things. Um, now let's talk about some campaigns, okay? So that's the data. Now you're like, okay, that's great, but like, this is, sounds like a lot of time. Well, so that's where the campaigns come in. So I'm gonna give you an example of one where it's a coaching program for falling um, production. So how do you know their production's falling? Well, based on what I just showed you, right? You're pulling in the MS data, you know exactly what their production is. You can see kind of percent changes. You could filter also based on, I wanna look with people with, with production changes so that I can do a specific kind of campaign with them. You know, you could find, you know, those people that are, you know, negative 20%, right? And then trigger that campaign. It could be manually though, right? The, the bottom line is those, you know, visibility, right? You can't manage what you can't measure. This gives you the ability to measure it. Now you need to take action, right? So it could be one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm going to give myself a task. I'm going to call them. I'm going to text. Or this gives you, you know, a way to do it in a little more scalable way, which is a coaching program, right? So this would be a campaign you're triggering. So you're going to send an email. Basically, hey, we've got your back. Like we're looking out for you. We've kind of noticed this. What can we do to help you, right? Reach out in a very personal way. This is short message. The other thing is short messages end on a question, okay? Conversational mails work best if it's not long. It's short. It looks like you personally sent it. You end on a question. And the reason that you end on a question is to get that conversation started. Send an email, send a task, give yourself a task, um, basically to follow up. You know, if they did an appointment, get that set. And if they didn't, right? So this gives you kind of a scalable way to catch up with those people that need some coaching around that falling production, right? And these days, um, you know, it, it, especially kind of newer agents, something you really need to kind of keep an eye on. Hopefully the interest rates have kind of peaked here recently, um, but it's made the market a little harder, especially for those new agents um, and just the lack of listings out there because of that. Okay, on to hot principle number four. Yes, this is a fun one. So a sense of community engages agents. Um, so this is so important to your brokerage, making sure you have a community that the agents feel welcome in, they enjoy being a part of, and how do you build that? So there's so many ways you can build um, community. This is so much room to be creative for your brokerage. Um, but one of those things you can do is uh, regular updates. So what kind of updates? It can be anything, but keeping your agents informed of what's coming. So this is a huge one. Maybe you have a newsletter for your team um, and maybe you have uh, something really big coming up that you want your agents to be aware of. It doesn't have to be an event or anything like that, but some big change, keeping them in the loop really engages agents and makes them feel valued. So when big changes are coming or even small changes, something you perceive as small, they might see as huge. It could be something as small as, um, you know, getting, getting a new, a new technology tool could be something like that. And you see that as, as relatively small in terms of change, but they might see that as huge. So really communicating those updates with the agents is so key. And the next is transparent feedback loops. So this one we already kind of talked about, but creating a culture of two-way dialogue, open and honest feedback. So giving them the opportunity to share their feedback with you without being um, you know, a blocker to that feedback. So making sure they feel comfortable and confident in sharing it and having it be received and, and not feeling like they can't communicate because that will push people out the door. Uh, the next thing would be personalized engagement. So Jim was just kind of speaking about this, but making sure they feel that one-on-one -on -one connection. So uh, one really big one that you can do is the congratulations on an anniversary. Um, you know, they've been with your brokerage a year, eight years, 15 years, um, communicating that, congratulating them on that, thanking them for their time and their efforts and making it feel really special for them. Um, you can also do this on holidays. Um, birthdays are another great one to make a, a positive and one-on-one -on -one connection. And there are ways to automate that as well. You can send motivation and accountability messages. Jim showed you an accountability message. Um, you can also send motivating messages 
um, you know, anything that's just kind of a pick me up, especially if you see, you know, maybe they haven't been as active or maybe they've been having a tough time just in their personal life. Something that is personalized and um, reaches a target for them. So it communicates with them that you care and that they're valued as a person, not just production. Uh, and then the next one we have is technology tools. Use your uh, technology to communicate and streamline your communication, enhance transparency and track engagement. So make sure you see how much are our agents communicating back with us? Are your messages hitting the mark? Are they reaching your agents? Are they are they communicating with you? Are they engaging with you? Or are they just falling flat? Um, and that leads into the two-way dialogue. How much um, is the, the agent you're communicating with? How much are they participating in the communication? You know, should we be listening to what they have to say? Um, we should be giving them a floor to speak. And so giving that, that opportunity for them to have a two-way dialogue where really the, the, the purpose is to have them talk and, and you listen. Um, and then the last one is team events. Um, you know, a lot of agents are very social. They enjoy these things. And so hosting team events that are fun for your agents, they get to network with one another. They maybe see someone they don't see often in your brokerage, especially if they're a really big brokerage. It gives a really good chance for them to kind of mix and share experience and, and kind of build that community face-to-face, -face. Um, especially now that we can do team events face-to-face -face again. Um, you know, we've had to build over, over Zoom and we've been building in social media and that's all great. You can still do those things, but giving that opportunity for them to actually meet together is so important. So now let's talk about how to automate and streamline some of those things using uh, BrokerKit if you're so interested. Now, obviously these are all things you should be doing regardless, whether it's, you know, using your your iPhone and Gmail, you know, or, you know, as as your team that you're trying to keep in touch with or your your agent roster gets a little bigger, maybe you, you need some help. So a couple of things. So regular updates, the most heavily used feature in BrokerKit is probably Blast Team, okay? so. If you come in here, you can go to Blast Team. You can send a text or email to everyone at once, okay? Best way to get people um, on uh, training appointments is this Blast Team. This right here is the most heavily used feature in BrokerKit right there, Blast Team, okay? Because um, it works, right? I mean, it cuts through the noise with the texting to your own agents versus kind of email, right? And, uh, you know, they're your own agents. You don't need to worry about any kind of like opt-in issues, things like that. Um so um, the other thing is, right, if you, it, what if you want to like communicate with a specific group, say you have, you know, a mastermind group, you can just select them and send them, um, well, let's see, unfortunately, I don't have anybody selected, but you could select them and send them a text or a trigger campaign or an email, right? It allows you to do this very uniquely with everyone or, or, you know, um, or by group, essentially new agents and whatnot. Now let's talk about some campaigns that you can leverage for this type of thing. So again, we've got lots of them in our campaign library, but I'm just going to take it a specific example, which is going to be a happy birthday one. Okay. So if you look at this, um, you can send kind of HTML and CSS emails out there um, in broker kit. This is going to be just, uh, you know, when it's on their birthday, send an email and then send them a text really, really briefly. Okay. But um, it is something that you can automate though, right? So obviously you can copy this down, you can customize it to whatever. By the way, um, it is gonna go ahead and add their, you know, kind of their name in there and, and, and company name, personalize it. You can uh, add other personalization in there. But with um, campaign triggers, what you can do is in Broker Kit, you filter on team, which is on your roster, which is the retention side. Uh, there's all these date-based ones. So you can do it on anniversary, birthday, and we have campaigns around these too. Um, when they, whenever you created the contact, when they joined, right? Um, which would be kind of their anniversary. Um, uh, when they last had some kind of activity, last sign in, their license expiration date too, right? Like just checking in. Um, so let's just take the birthday one. I showed that example. So it's super easy. Right. So if you've got 100 agents reaching out to wish them happy birthday every year, it can be a lot of work. If you have, you know, like some of our customers, 2000 agents, it's a, that's like a full time job, practically. Right. So all you have to do is take that campaign. I showed you copy it, tailor it for your business, go in, say birthday on and you can have one be if you if you choose that, save it. And then you select that birthday campaign right there. Save it. Boom. It's just automated from then on. They're going to 
on their birthday, it's going to send those messages moving forward. Totally automated. Okay. So you're keeping in touch, but it doesn't require, you know, with, you know, 30, 50, you know, 2000 agents, right? Like uh, it doesn't, you're, you're, you're basically increasing how much it's almost like your surface area of like how many agents you can touch on a daily basis um, and impact their lives. Okay. Anything else to add on that one, Jenna? I did have one thing to add on that birthday campaign. Um, you know, as Jim was speaking, that could be a full-time job. If you have like a thousand agents, um, another really cool feature of that is if you if an agent did leave and you archive them, that communication stops. So it's not another layer, but we're going to retain those agents. So we're not going to worry about that. Yes, absolutely. And if you want to hire them back, you just move them back to recruiting exactly. and add them into your drip series on the recruiting side. Exactly. And this, this will automatically end basically when you do that. Yes. But implementing these strategies, you won't even, won't even be worried. Okay. So on to hot principle number five. All right, so this is our last hot principle of today. So recognition builds trust. Um, you know, giving credit to your agents for what they're doing and how they're helping grow the brokerage. Uh, this is so important. So acknowledgement and appreciation. Um, you know, this is from the little things to, hey, you know, we saw you helping out a new agent. Thanks so much for that. Find the opportunities to thank and, and acknowledge what your agents are doing and also the achievements that they've they've had. Um, have incentive programs that can look different for every brokerage, but find something that resonates with the agents on your team and, and incentivize them. Um, public recognition. This is big. Um, this could be on social media. This could be at meetings. This could be really anywhere that you have an opportunity to call attention to the really good things that your agents are doing on your team. Um, and this goes a really long way in making them feel valued and also kind of building trust that they are going to get recognized and value for what they are doing and the efforts that they're making. Um, again, we're going to hit the feedback and evaluation. Um, and that is with with making sure you know they are heard it might be something small um but it might be a big deal to your agents so having that opportunity for them to communicate and build that trust with you is is key and then back to the recognition personalize it so it shouldn't be the same message to every single person um you know you want it to have that one-on-one -on -one feel so you can still automate this but you can use things like variables, or you could use a template where you're putting in, you know, key information that makes it feel really special to that person. Um, and the last thing you can do is use a leaderboard. This is not only motivating because no one, no one wants to be left off the leaderboard, um, but you can also see the activities and you can uh, use this to help you analyze and use it as a predictive index as well, or a predictive um, analysis as well, where you're using the stats on the leaderboard to see, you know, maybe someone was was really on fire and now they've kind of slowed down. So figuring out what that, that issue might be. So leaderboards are huge. Okay, so now I'll show you some of those things. So I'm gonna start out with the leaderboard. So now keep in mind, we're, you know, we're managing your talent funnel versus your sales funnel, right? So it's not your agent leaderboard. It's really gonna be for your, your staff, right? Your management team, okay? So, um, so going in here, let's go back to the recruiting side, right? So. This activity report creates a later leaderboard for everybody involved on the recruiting side, which is typically, you know, your office leaders, maybe you have a recruiter, regional management, and kind of overall brokerage management. So you're going to be able to see for everybody in that leadership team, you know, like activity, right? Are they actually doing it, right? Are they reaching out to people, doing texts and setting appointments, but also um, hires? How many hires did they bring on? how much production is in their pipeline and how much production did they bring in, right? So it allows you to recognize and give coaching to your management too, right? Because um, at the end of the day, having a strong kind of leadership team helps you really scale um, as you want to go beyond kind of one office as a brokerage, or if you're already a large brokerage and, you know, you have a, you know, multiple offices, you know, can become increasingly scale, tough to scale if you don't have a strong leader in each office, right? So, and in the leaderboard, you're going to be able to see where everybody is. It's also public. Everybody can see where they are relative to others. That's intentional because it creates peer pressure. Now, we don't recommend that you call out people at the bottom publicly. Not great for the culture of your, your business, but the people at the top, make it public, show it, 
right? Laud them for that. They're going to feel great. And then that creates kind of um, some inherent motivation within that management team to want to be at the top. It also gives you the ability to kind of coach them on an individual basis, not just the agents, but your managers too, based on where they're getting blocked. Do they need a better or bigger territory? Do they just need to pick up the activity? Are they having trouble turning conversations into appointments? Are they having trouble closing people on kind of recruiting appointments? So with that, now I'm going to go back, flip back to the agent side of what she was talking about with recognition. And let's see, we've got another campaign to kind of, um, which is essentially just current agents reaching out. Okay. So this is going to be, you know, really back to, um, you know, like automating it, right? Like, so the people that are doing well, um, you want to, you know, even your kind of current agents, your leadership, everyone make it part of the, the process to give recognition. Everybody wants to feel like they're doing well. Um, nobody wants to, you know, especially when the market's tough, like things that go well, people really want to hear about. It's going to go a long way. Um, if, if they have a sale, maybe their production's down, but if they have that sale, they're, it's going to make them feel great. So this, this would be kind of a campaign that's going to help you do that in a more scalable way across, you know, the business, keep, keeping up with your current agents. So with that, I think that was it on hot principle number five for me, Jen, unless you had anything to add. That's it for me too. Okay, awesome. Um, so then just your key takeaways, five hot principles. Number one, create loyalty with a supportive culture. Number two, cultivate agent investment with that onboarding, right? That first 90 days is critical. Three, long -term, nurture long-term success with coaching, right? People that produce tend to stick around. Now they can also leave for other reasons, but if they don't produce, they probably will not stick around. Four, engage your agents with community. Build a community, make them feel part of uh, communities that they're not, especially, right? Like if they're, if they don't come to the office much, they're off on their own, they don't talk to many people, like it's easier for them to leave. If they are enmeshed in a community, they have a lot of relationships, harder for them to leave. And it will help them be successful by having a network to tap into. Last, build trust through recognition. These are your five hot principles. Think about how you can put them to, to work today. And of course, if you want to leverage BrokerKit, we'll help you streamline these. If you're not using BrokerKit, or if you want to just use Gmail on your phone, do it. But these are the things you need to do. Um, if you want to scale your business, we can help you automate some of these things.